sometimes, especially in animated works, when a voice actor or actress has either died or abruptly left the show or franchise they were a part of, the writers will still want to pay tribute or do something with that character without recasting them. And though it doesn't happen often, occasionally they'll opt to pull out previously recorded lines from their archives in order for the character to speak one last time in their original actor's voice and get a proper send-off. Sometimes they'll even do this with live-action footage, but that's even rarer. And if I'm being perfectly honest here, that's a concept that's always fascinated me, especially in animated stuff. To see old lines be taken, recycled, and molded into different contexts than they were originally intended for. I just think the whole thing is a really interesting idea, and I'm somewhat disappointed that it isn't used more, at least in situations where it's a viable option. So today I'd like to go over a few movies that have taken extensive archive lines and footage and compare which ones I believe made the most of what they had to work with. Now there might be some minor spoilers ahead, so just be on the lookout if I bring up anything you don't want ruined. Okay, so to start off with something most of you will be familiar with, beloved comedian Don Rickles died in June of 2017. And unfortunately, this was before script had been finalized for Toy Story 4, a series in which he had always voiced Mr. Potato Head. So rather than write the character out or recast him, the writers decided to use archived lines of Rickles in order for him to still have a role in the movie, which I still do believe was the best thing to do and appreciate that they went that route. However, I believe they could have done a much better job with it. I mean, no, he wasn't going to be able to be a complete chatterbox or anything like that, but he only gets five lines at most and a chuckle. And they had three movies, outtakes from those same movies, video games, theme park rides, TV specials, and I'm sure a few other things I'm forgetting to choose from. They could have easily had him say a lot more than he did. Now listen. I do understand that he isn't, nor was he ever intended to be, the main character of the movie. And I also get that they didn't want to write the entire movie around what Mr. Potato Head could say. I get that, and I most certainly don't blame the writers for that either. However, after watching the movie only once, I myself could come up with quite a few different places where they could have had him say something and it wouldn't have had any impact on the story or would have just required the slightest tweaks to the script. For example, in the scene where Woody reveals Forky to the other toys, he could try to sell them on how great he is while everybody stands there in awkward silence, just like in the movie. Then out of nowhere, Mr. Potato Head being blunt as ever, just outright states, it's horrible, a line he had previously said in Toy Story 3. It's something Don Rickles had said, and is perfectly in character for him to do that. Then Woody could desperately fight back and defend Forky, to which Potato Head then says in an unimpressed tone, yeah, yeah, whatever, something he had already said in Toy Story 2, and just walks away only making everything even more awkward and explaining why he doesn't say anything for the rest of the scene, which then continues on pretty much as it does in the movie. Now what's really changed here? Other than a few lines, that whole thing conveys the exact same thing and may even help the scene flow better by having a character outright show disapproval of Forky, which is something Potato Head would most definitely do. Now, you're free to hate that scenario if you wish, but I'm just trying to show how he could have had more of a presence without affecting the plot as written instead of just spending the whole movie as a silent bystander. Or they could have even done something more creative, like have him lose his mouth early on so he can't talk and have a minor C-plot be some of the lesser characters trying to find it in between everything else that's going on. 
then at the end, when they finally do find it, have him reveal something, obviously voiced in archive by Rickles, that actually helps Woody and the others out in the end. Now I know that's a little cheesy, and it might even be a bit too similar to Mrs. Potato Head's eye in the third movie, but I honestly think that could have made for a fun little subplot, allow Potato Head to do more while having a reason not to speak, and subtly pay tribute to Rickles by having it be something he says that in the end is the answer to all their problems. Now, obviously they couldn't have done that in the movie as written, but I honestly think that a story involving that would have been better than the one we got. But that's a potential video for another day. Basically, my point here is, while I understand they didn't want to write the entire movie around Rickles' death, I believe there was a lot of potential to do something better with the character, but the writers opted to do just the bare minimum instead because they were so focused on not letting anything get in the way of the story they wanted to tell. Now, as I've mentioned in a previous video, which you can find a link in the description to, I believe that Pixar's slavish devotion to their stories and themes is in and of itself a problem, but I feel that stuff like this only proves it. Because like I said, even if you take the movie exactly as is and don't want to change a word of it, there was still room for Potato Head to say more. However, there's another Pixar movie that I feel was even worse in this regard, and that's Cars 3. Now, keep in mind that in this case, Paul Newman had died almost a decade earlier, and they had made a whole other movie in the meantime, so you can't say his death came out of left field like Don Rickles arguably had. And it just so happened that while they were recording the first movie, Newman would often go on long tangents about his passion for racing, and the microphone was usually kept on during these talks which, in the end, amounted to 25 hours of audio from Newman. And how much of that did they use? A couple of lines for the opening scene. Almost everything else archived by Newman is either from the first movie or, in one instance, the video game. It's like, after reading stuff like this, I could honestly go up to these people and, uh, give them a good talking over, because at least to me, it's so obvious what they should have done when they had that much material to work with. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that for one reason or another, 20 of those hours couldn't have been used in the movie. And even if that was the case, that'd still be five hours of stuff they could have used. Even if only one hour was usable, that still would have been more than enough. Now, from there, you could keep the plot mostly as is. Lightning McQueen is afraid he's getting old and has a minor crisis, wondering if he won't be able to race anymore. But what changes is that sprinkled throughout the movie, specifically whenever he's at his lowest point, he would have flashbacks of Doc talking about his own passion for racing, obviously taken from those recordings, and have that be what inspires Lightning to keep on fighting. Don't you think that would have worked much better? To have Doc, even from beyond the grave, continue to inspire McQueen and have him be the driving force behind his determination to keep racing by reminding him of his own passion and love for it. Because I don't know about you, but I think that could have been the basis for a fantastic story, and not to mention one heck of a tribute to Paul Newman. And they didn't do anything with it. But the worst part has to be that they had the footage right there to use. Nobody was stopping them from using it. And they completely squandered the opportunity to make something out of it. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on storytelling or anything like that. But as an amateur writer, I feel the writing was on the wall on this one. And they scrubbed it all off instead of seeing the brilliance of it. But to be completely fair here, there are also movies that I believe did archive footage really well, and one of the best had to be Princess Leia in The Rise of Skywalker. 
Now I know this movie has many issues, but she is not one of them. Anytime I see a stray clip of this movie with her in it, I'm always amazed by what they were able to do with her. Especially because in this case it was actual footage and not just the voice they had to work with. And if you ask me, they did that so seamlessly, it almost feels as if Carrie Fisher was actually there to film those scenes. And not to mention, they milked that old footage for all it's worth. You could tell they went out of their way to make sure she was in it as much as possible. And if you ask me, the final result is no less than one of the best uses of archive footage I have ever seen. Now, if only the rest of the movie had been handled just as well. However, what I feel should be kept in mind here is, writing a story where a character speaks in archive is hard, no matter what the circumstances are. Whenever that character speaks, you have to make sure other characters and the situation as a whole fits that line, and that the delivery of said line at least somewhat matches the intended context. And I believe the main thing that separates its uses in the previous examples is that in The Rise of Skywalker, the writers were willing to write everything around what Princess Leia could say and do. Whereas in Toy Story 4 and Cars 3, they weren't, and were more concerned with telling their story first and foremost. Now, I'm not trying to say that one was right over the other, and you are free to have any opinion you want on the subject. But I honestly believe that in both those cases, if they had been more willing to let it affect the story, then ironically, it might have just helped make them better overall. Okay, that's really everything I have to say on that. So now I want you to tell me. Do you think archived lines and footage is a great way to pay tribute to a character? Or do you think there are better ways of doing it? Please feel free to let me know in the comments. And remember, you are free to disagree with me about everything I just said if you want. You are entitled to your opinion on this or any matter. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.